sometimes the sneaky link just ain't worth it. You don't always gotta put your life on the line. Like I wish someone told me this. About two weeks after the infamous story time where I told y'all that I almost got robbed in the sneaky link, my dumb ass clearly didn't learn my lesson. So I went on an app called Grinder and I saw this guy named BM. If you don't know how Grinder works, it's basically like a hookup app for gay people, but all these bitches are a heat. Like someone need to neuter these bitches for real. They usually don't put their full name on there because which me you know my legal for bitch. I'm here to toot it and boot it. But BM hit me up. I'm instantly attracted because he's older than me. You know, I don't like him straight out the sandbox. I like him class in 1999. But the problem that occurred was he was Caucasian. And you know, they age like goat milk. Mind you, when I was texting him, I was actually texting another guy. He was a black guy though. Around the same age, real cute. But he was taking forever to respond. So I was like, okay, I'm about to hang out with BM. But before I came over, BM was like, oh, let me see your face. Like, can we FaceTime? Da -da -da? I want to make sure you're you before you come to my house, which is respectable. So I FaceTime him on my Kendall Jenner shit like, hey, how are you? You know, he's starstruck because he just ain't seen a better bitch. He's like, all right, since his address, I know it's like five minutes away. He's like, okay, I'm gonna take a shower first before you get here. And I was like, uh, okay, when you want me to leave? He talking about some leave now. So I'm like, mm, all right. So I hop and Chef Young on my speed racer shit. I'm three minutes into my drive. He gonna text me with some devil horn emojis. Oh, I'm ready. Mr. Ball smell like Satan, huh? I clearly I had no self-respect because I kept driving to the home. The bitch, I pull up and the house is nice or whatever. And he, uh, he opened the door in a row. Bitch, he wanted some keys, sussy. But mind y'all, still a little bit nervous because just two weeks ago, I almost got my shit flipped. So, you know, I am a little cautious. I walk in and I get bombarded by these two mutts, right? And I'm looking at them, they look real humanish. I couldn't tell if I was looking at RuPaul or, you know, a Siberian Husky. So I tell him to put the dogs up because I'm allergic to dogs, right? He puts them up, but like four different times. And I'm looking at him like, did you adopt these bitches from AAA? So he upstairs to his room and I sit down on the bed and I just smelled the dogs. And I'm like, you know what? But you're getting your booty ate though. So tell me why he opened up his roll. And I just look at him like, where's the rest of it at? Hit me with the, you ain't ready for this shit, bitch. Nah, bitch, it's time to go. Bitch, it's time to go right now. So my smartest device, the plan, like, you know what really turns me on? He was like, well, I was like, I like to like cosplay. So he's like, really? <laughs> no, bitch. He agrees to the plan. I start walking downstairs, bitch. There go lady in the trap. I almost kick one of them, but you know, don't don't tell Peter. So as soon as I get out the front door, bitch, I sprint to Cheviana. And I'm like, you know what, bitch? This is exactly what your little hoe ass get. Go the fuck home. I'm just like, nah, fuck that. Someone's chewing his butt tonight. So I hit the black guy up and I'm like, hey, like, what are you doing? He gonna hit me back up talking about some. I just got to Bone Marrow's house. He said you just left a few minutes ago. Who the fuck is Bone Marrow? Then other shit start clicking. I'm like, wait, he didn't tell me he was coming over. What was y'all gonna do to me? You was gonna take my butt? You fucking booty bandits. I went home, blocked them, right? Now fast forward to now. I still have Grinder, but do I meet up with motherfuckers on there? No. I'm honestly really just kind of scared, but I like to get the attention. Why did Bone Marrow hit me up yesterday talking about some hi in his address? I will feed your dogs a snicker. Get the fuck away from me. One thing I'm not gonna let somebody do is tell me that ghosts are fake, especially if they're religious. Why would I'm dealing with God to be fake? But you want Jesus Cellular asking him why that eviction notice said you move out tomorrow. So y'all so y'all know when you growing up and everyone's always afraid of the dark, but you supposed to grow out of that shit when you like 13. Because of this, I still sleep with a TV on. And if not a TV, some LED lights. As y'all know, my great-grandma passed away years ago. And I would still go to her house every weekend and just hang out with my great-grandpa, right? My great grandma got me everything I wanted. That was from food to toys to clothes to shoes to money. If I ain't have it, they did. One thing my grandma didn't play was that greedy shit. I better not drink that fruit punch one day no more. So after she passed, I pretty much got away with anything because it was only my great-grandpa there. And, you know, I still got, you know, punished and stuff like that. But it was never to an extent to, like, my parents or anything. Like, you know, so I was still bad as fuck. One day I was real hungry and Nani wasn't there to stop shit. And so I was like, I'm about to go get some food. But I was still nervous to wake him up because after she passed away, he started sleeping on her side of the bed, which was the closest to the door. So I had to get real, I had to get real sneaky about it there. I ended up crawling on the floor and then I ended up getting outside. And my grandpa always kept the hallway light on, so I was chilling. But at the end of the hallway, there was the living room and then a kitchen. And then past the kitchen, there was another living room that was only, like, no one was really allowed in there. It was my great grandma's living room. Like, you know, she had like china in there and really expensive, like a bunch of glass and shit. So, I, you know, I wasn't allowed in there. But at nighttime, my room was always dark because we never kept the lights on in there. The only time it would have lights in there was if it was like daytime and the daylight got through the window. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to stay away from that creepy ass room. We're going to call it the glass room. So when you first walk into the house, the first thing you see on your left is the glass room. So you can walk in, look at the china, da da da. And then if you go down a little like corner, that's the entrance to the kitchen. So the only thing separating the kitchen from the glass room was a sliding door and it was jammed the house wasn't that big so what i did was i turned the light on in the living room and that pretty much got the kitchen like i wasn't making a meal bitch i just want some marshmallows from the monkey charms so where our chandelier is would be like the living room area and then where our microwave is would be like where the fridge was literally like right here was the glass room and it was hella like hella dark pitch black dark so clearly when i was a kid i was hella short so i was literally the size of like a swisher and my grandparents always kept the cereal in a cabinet like this right so i had to jump on the counter and then reach over 
to get the cereal. So I'm already freaked out because the room was dimmer than this. Like I said, I was afraid of the dark and shit and the glass room was nothing but dark. I'm literally getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> this shit is like actually so scary to me. Oh my God. Like I said, I'm reaching for the cereal and right like at the edge of the threshold between me, that cabinet and the glass room, I hear like fingers running through a chandelier. <laughs> so out of panic, I just freeze. And I'm like, was that me? Like did me opening up like the cabinet, like make wind go over there or something? That just didn't make no sense to me. And then I stay there for like five more seconds. And then it's like the chandelier got pushed. I ran. I, I said, fuck the cereal. The cereal fell all over the floor. And I just sprinted to my granddad's room. And you know when you're running up the stairs and there's that feeling that someone's behind you? It felt like amplified by 10. Like there was really someone about to snatch me up. So burst in my grandparents' room. I'm crying. My granddad's like, what's going on? Da -da -da -da. And I locked the door. I'm like, please don't go out there. Like I'm telling him, like, I think someone's in the house. Da -da -da. And girl, no one was there. That's it. If Jeffrey Dahmer was still ripping and running the streets and cracking bitches open like crab legs, he would have a field day with me. And let me tell you why. So when I was in college, I used to go to the cafeteria all the time. And before you get on with the big bitch comments, watch your mouth, bitch. We cannot forget who's on follow back. So when I was in college, we had a cafeteria, clearly, and we called it the pub, right? And they sold this smoothie. Yo, that shit tasted like a threesome. That shit was so fucking good. I could literally, literally not even trying to exaggerate. And I would be the only one who liked the smoothie, but there was this other boy who would always be there when I was there. When I would order my smoothie, he would always be looking at me, and I was insecure, so I didn't think that, you know, like, oh, maybe he's looking at me because he thinks I'm cute, but just in case he was, I always had that ass tooted up like this. The person would be like, how may I help you? And I'd be like, yeah, can I get a, um, can I get a Jamaican jammer, please? <laughs> so after like two weeks of doing it, he'd never say anything to me, and I was like, okay, clearly he just recognizes the one big gay boy on TikTok. And I was like, you know, I'm not about to keep arching my back and I'd be 30 and my shit look like a crescent moon. Like, no. But one day I checked my DMs and he's in my DMs like, oh, yeah, I recognize you from TikTok. You're so funny. You're so pretty. Da -da -da -da. Like, <laughs> Papi, that's what I like to hear. So I texted him back because the text message was like three days old. And I was like, oh, my God, he's not going to respond to me. We're not going to get married. He's not going to love me. He's not going to eat my booty. But for the next week and a half, we just texted. He's texting back dumb quick. Like, no matter how long, it could take me a day, two days, an hour, a minute. He's going to text back right when the message is sent. So one day I was like, okay, well, let me come over. Cause he, he kept talking about, yeah, my roommate, I'm just bored, you know, my roommate's gone. Like he just loved bringing his roommate up. I'm like, okay, listen, if you wanna devour some cheeks, just say that. Well, his apartment was like three minutes away from my school. So I basically teleported to the pipe. Okay, call me a plumber. He gives me the apartment number and I'm looking for it and I cannot find it. So I see these two old people sitting outside. And I'm like, hey, have you guys seen apartment number six? And they're like, yeah, it's right there. So I start walking to it and they asked me, Oh, are you planning to move in here? And I'm like, oh no, I'm meeting a friend. Cause you know, why are you my fucking business? They're like, mm, that's a vacant, that's a vacant apartment. Excuse me? When they said that, for some reason I got scared cause I just started watching Criminal Minds. I was like, what if he got like a hacksaw waiting for me when I walk up in that bitch? I don't, need, I don't got no time for it, I don't. Like, oh no, it might be that building over there. So I turn around and there was this one, one building th that was just so secluded from the rest of them. I'm like, of course. Of, of course he lives here. I go, yes. Yeah. So I start walking to it and I'm looking for the number. And so how it works is you walk up these stairs and then you kind of walk down like a little corner. And then there's the rest of the apartments going down this way. But there's no stairs on that side. So there's only one way out this bitch if he tries to kill me. I knock on the door and then he opens the door like this. Like not even playing. What? But I proceed to walk in. So as I do, you know when you go on the sneaky link, people be like, oh, my room's this way, follow me. He just let me follow him. And I'm like, I keep checking behind my back. I'm like, I don't want to get OJ Simpson right now. No, I'm going to have to make a part two because it's just so, this part is just so weird. Oh my God. So basically when you walk in, it's like door for the bathroom, a closet, a kitchen, living room, like very small. I knew it was the bathroom door because the door was open. And so I'm like, where do you have room to have a roommate? Like I, I have to make a part two because it really starts getting weird right now. Now, did I see the red flags before I went to the sneaky link? Yes, I did. But was I thinking? No, I, was, I wasn't thinking with the head right here. I was thinking with the one down there, the coochie head. So I'm going to use this hallway right here as an example. And don't ask about that. <laughs> I got locked in the bathroom. We had to cut a hole in the wall. So I walk in from the front door. Right here, there's nothing on the wall. Like, it's literally just like there's nothing there. And there's the bathroom. That door was open. And then there was, like, a closet here for, like, you know, towels and shit. You know, to wash your ass. Then a few steps down, you get to the kitchen. And the kitchen was the size of a fucking shoebox. Like, there was no, there was really no, no space. I said the kitchen was a living room and it was so small they literally didn't even have enough space between the TV and the couch. So I knew there was no way there could be another room in the living room. Like, I don't know if I'm explaining this right. So y'all got the point. There was no space. But when there was that one door when you first walk into the house, I'm thinking it's like his roommate's room. And I'm like, okay, so maybe we got to go through like a little Coraline door and find his room. Maybe a door to Narnia. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't build it. Looking like, I don't know where to go. So then I'm looking around like, where is he at? And then he's dead ass just staring at me in front of that door. 
just smiling at me. He's like waving me into the room. I'm like, bro, why didn't you just tell me to come in? Like, I'm like, bro, I know you get no bitches. Like, you get no play. I just know he doesn't. I wasn't thinking with my common sense, was I? I was thinking with my cooter. So I still walked in the room. When I walked in the room, it was kind of dark. And I'm like, okay, let me turn this light on before he tried to slip my throat with a car key or something. He kept pushing for the light to be off. And I was like, no, like, I want the light on. Like, da 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 da. And he was like, okay, well, I'm turning this lamp. So he turned this lamp on. It was pretty lit. I was like, okay, we're, ch we're chilling. He laid down. I'm talking to him. Mind y'all, like I said, we've been talking for like a week, like a week, week and a half. Why when I lay down, he gonna tell me, yeah, I don't speak much English. Excuse me? See, but this be the problem. Y'all y'all be having your priorities so fucked up. How you not know how to tell somebody where your room at, but you know how to say I eat butt? Then he starts talking about how like, he's just bragging about how this roommate is going to Cuba and flies out of town, and he's going to go with him next week. And I'm like, there is nobody else on this lease. Like, why are you lying? Like, And then you just told me you didn't know how to speak English. So I start planning my escape plan. I'm like, yo, what if I wake up in a tub full of ice and my, and my kidney missing? Like, I'm not going to know what to do. It's going to be nobody's fault but mine. I was like, okay, well, can I wash my hands? Like, I'm not really feeling that good. Da -da -da -da. He's like, yeah, it's fine. Go to the bathroom. I already knew what the bathroom was, clearly. So when I left the room to go to the bathroom, I remember I shut the door behind me, and I know I shut it because it was hella creaky. Like, like I don't know if someone's been, like, eating the door out, but it was, like, moaning. So, boom, I'm washing my hands. I don't shut the door behind me because I want to know if he opens the door back up. And he literally starts opening the door, but you can tell he's trying to be sneaky with it because, you know, when, like, you don't want the door, like, you don't want someone to know that you open the door or close it, so you kind of hold the handle like this and then you open it or close it i heard the handle move and then i heard the door creak slow as fuck so i'm like he's trying to sneak out this room and try like like to like kidnap me i don't know so i look outside the bathroom and the door's open i'm like yeah no it's time to get the fuck up out of here so i'm trying to take my shoes on i'll put my shoes on hella quiet like i do not want him to know why do i look up and he's staring at me from the kitchen the entrance to the kitchen Every time I think about this, my I just get goosebumps because it's so creepy. I knew I heard like metal clack, but I was like, no, like he's not about to do anything to me. But girl, why are you in the kitchen? You was just in the room. So I just picked my shoes up and I ran. And I remember I was running and then he was Snapchatting me. He was like, you bitch. And, da -da -da -da. and I actually saw him again. And that's just a whole nother story for a whole nother time. And yeah, that's it.